Ready to learn how to light portraits like the pros do? Let's get to it. What's up everyone, my name is Sal Sincata and I am a wedding and portrait photographer and today we're gonna dive into lighting portraits the way professionals do. Now, the way professionals do, don't hang on that term too harshly if you will, right? We wanna talk about lighting ratios. That's really what it comes down to and don't zone out on me if you're a natural light photographer or you don't understand this stuff. I promise you it is not complicated. In fact, it's quite simple. Look, we live in a world where everyone is a photographer. Everybody's out there, they got their iPhones and they are photographers, maybe not very good ones, but they are still photographers and everybody should enjoy photography. But one thing you'll notice is with professional photographers, they know how to use light and shadow to create more dimension in their portrait. And so these lighting ratios, as they're referred to, can be one to one, where both lights are equal, two to one, four to one, eight to one. And I'll dive into what all those things mean, but most importantly, I'm gonna show you the results of those. And you're gonna be blown away that they are not very difficult to execute on. So it just comes down to understanding just basic theory. And then from there, like everything else, you season to taste. You're the artist, you're the photographer, but you have to understand the rules before you can break them. And this really came to fruition on one of my last trips to Italy. We were in the Vatican and we were looking up at the ceilings, if you've ever been there, and you could see all these paintings and they were brought to life by using shadow on a two dimensional image to give it more depth. And that really is the difference, I believe, between somebody who just rolls up with an iPhone or somebody who is, and I don't mean this in a, in a completely derogatory way, a natural light photographer. It just means you don't understand how to control light. But once you understand this simple stuff that I'm gonna show you today, it will change the way it looks. So the first thing we're gonna do is start with one-to-one. -one. And in a one-to-one -one lighting ratio, you have two lights or possibly three lights set up, but they are evenly lit, meaning both lights are at the same power. And I'm gonna show you how we do it and I'm gonna show you the results. Why would I ever use this, Sal, if you're telling me even light isn't exactly advanced or something that a professional would do? Well, like I said in the beginning, that's a little bit of a misnomer. We use that type of lighting for beauty lighting. So the minute we start adding shadows, if somebody has bad skin or wrinkles, it exaggerates it. Why? Because we're creating shadows and drawing attention to those acne marks, wrinkles, just things like that. So flat lighting could be used for maybe some beauty work, maybe some fashion work, maybe some product photography. But in the end, I think when we get through this, you'll agree, let me know in the comments, as we start adding dimension, it starts feeling like a different portrait. So let's get to it here. Ooh, everything I'm using today, down in the comments. So go in there and you'll see those links for what I'm using. So I'll just run it for you real quick. I'm using two FJ200s. We don't need much more than that in the studio. For my key light, my main light, I'm using a, an Octabox. So it's a large Octabox for our key light. And then for our fill, we're just using a one by three strip box. Now, I'm going to fire these and measure them. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna step up right to about here. And I'm gonna measure each of these lights independently. All right, so remember, we've got two lights here and we are gonna measure them independently. So I'm controlling it through the trigger. I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna end up getting both lights at F11. So right now, back up half step more. This main light is at F11. Now what we're gonna do here, so what you can see here is we can put this main light to sleep from the trigger and now activate the uh, fill light so I can measure them independently. I think that's pretty important to be able to do. So now we're gonna measure this secondary light. This is also hitting at F11. So now both lights are hitting at F11. So this would be a one-to-one -one lighting ratio. So now I'm gonna set my camera up for that. I'm hoping you'll agree what I just did is not complicated, right? So both lights are set up to a power setting of nine. That's giving us F11. Now lights are additive in nature, right? So this will probably be F11 and a half. And you just have to adjust your camera for that with both of them. So we're gonna take a test shot here and I'm gonna turn the main light back on. Let's take just a quick test shot here. See what we're looking at. Okay. And that's a beautiful portrait. All right. So what you're seeing here in the portrait on your screen is you're seeing just straight out of camera, even light. I'm going to zoom in here. Very little shadow on her face, subtle shadow under her chin. That's a one to one. It's more of a beauty light setup. But now we want to start adding dimension. So now we're going to move to two to one. And in a two to one lighting ratio, there's a one stop difference between your main your fill and hair. So all I'm gonna do now, right, whatever triggering system you're using, is I'm going to turn down the fill light by one stop. And all I gotta do here, if you look on camera, let's go from nine to eight. Now there's a one stop difference between those two lights. Soft shadows will be there. So let's take the same portrait, okay? 
And now if we look at the difference between those, we'll actually start seeing some shadow. You're going from no shadow to some shadow on the left side of her face. So now what we wanna do, right, is go from a two to one to a four to one difference, and that's a two stop difference, or I'm sorry, a four to one lighting ratio, and that's a two stop difference. So now what we're gonna do, I'll show you again. We're gonna go to that fill light, and we're gonna come down another stop, okay? Now our main light is still at F11. So here we go, we'll take a test shot. And now that shadow is becoming more pronounced. All right, so now what we wanna do is go to an eight to one difference, right? So we were at one to one, which the lights are even, two to one, four to one, now eight to one, and there's a three stop difference. So the same thing. We're just gonna come right to the trigger. Again, I'm gonna show you this. And now you'll see there's a three stop difference, right? In that, and that is an eight to one ratio. And so now let's take these same shots again. Go both hands on the hips. Love that. Beautiful, stay there. Good. And again, you're seeing that difference. Beautiful. As you're looking at these pictures side by side, from one to one to eight to one, you are seeing a very subtle and incremental difference. And it's that controlling of light and shadow that allows professional photographers to stand out from using an iPhone camera or just natural light photography in general. Don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for that. But if you wanna add mood and drama and more of a three-dimensional look to your portraits, you've got to embrace shadows, but more importantly, understand what type of shadows you're adding to your portraits. Now, your creatives, as you know, season the taste, get out there, make your own images, and more importantly, I wanna know in the comments, which one did you like the best? So was it the, uh, take me through it. Was it the one to one even lighting? Was it the two to one, four to one, or eight to one, the last set of shots we took? You let me know which one you like. We'll see you in the next video.